Hello and welcome back to this GCSE Chemistry Revision Series brought to you by RevisedChemistry.uk. Today we're going to be learning about ionic bonding, simple covalent structures, giant covalent structures and metallic bonding. In an ionic bond, metals and nonmetals transfer electrons to form full outer shells of electrons. Group 1 metals and group 2 metals have only got one or two electrons in their outermost shell, respectively. By losing these outermost electrons, these elements reveal a full shell below. This is much easier than gaining 6 or 7 electrons, as the amount of energy required is just too much. Nonmetals, such as those in group 6 and group 7, have got 6 or 7 electrons in their outermost shell, respectively. It's a lot easier for these elements to gain one or two electrons than it is for them to lose six or seven electrons. And so we find that our metals become positive ions because they are losing negative electrons and our non-metals become negative ions because they're gaining these negative electrons. The metals are going to transfer their negative electrons to the non-metals and when this happens they will form an ionic bond. Ions are atoms or compounds, as we'll see in a later video, that have either gained or lost electrons. It's important to note that when ions are formed, the only thing that changes is the electron number. If we take sodium as an example, we can see that sodium starts with 11 protons, 11 electrons, and 12 neutrons. If sodium were to lose an electron and to become a sodium ion, we could rewrite the amount of protons, neutrons, and electrons in this ion. Because it's a sodium ion, it still has 11 protons. The neutral number didn't change either, so it still has the same number of neutrons. However, the electron number has now been reduced by one. And so sodium now has only 10 electrons. Because of this, we can see that the proton number contributes to 11 positive charges, and the electron number contributes to only 10 negative charges. This means that we've now got one more positive overall, and that's why we write sodium as a positive ion, 1 plus. Group 1 metals will always form a 1 plus ion, group 2 metals will always form a 2 plus ion, group 3 metals will always form a 3 plus ion, group 5 non-metals will always form a 3 minus ion, group 6 non-metals will always form a 2 minus ion, and group 7 non-metals will always form a 1 minus ion. Some common polyatomic ions that you need to know, and we're going to come across again and again through this course, are listed as shown. When an ionic compound forms between a metal and a non-metal, it may have the ending I. This means that the metal has formed a bond with only one non-metal, such as sulfur in sulfide, or oxygen in oxide. When an ionic compound's name ends with eight, that means that the metal has formed a bond with at least one non-metal and also with oxygen, such as sulfate or nitrate. When an exam question asks you to draw an ionic bond, they will be looking for a dot and cross diagram. When we draw dot and cross diagrams for ions, they're very similar to the electron configuration diagrams that we will have drawn for atoms in our previous videos. The only difference here is now we've got to take into account what the atom is going to look like after it's either gained or lost electrons. We can take a look at this example for sodium chloride. Sodium is going to lose one electron from its outermost shell to reveal a full outer shell below. And chlorine is going to gain one electron so it has a full outer shell. When we draw these we must make sure we include square brackets around the ions and we must include their charge in the top right hand corner. This shows that an ionic bond has been formed between these two ions. Why not have a go at drawing the dot and cross diagram for calcium fluoride? Pause the video now to wait for the answer. Drawing dot and cross diagrams for ionic compounds isn't a very accurate representation of how ionic compounds exist. Ionic compounds are made up of giant lattice structures of repeating ions, positive, negative, positive, negative, held together by an electrostatic force of attraction. That just means that the positive and the negative are attracted to each other. These structures are referred to as giant structures as they contain large numbers of ions 
held together. These giant ionic structures have two main physical and chemical properties that we can test. Ionic compounds have very high melting points, and we can test this by trying to melt them and recording the temperature at which they do melt. These compounds have high melting points because a lot of energy is required to break the electrostatic force of attraction between the ions. Ionic compounds are also very good at conducting electricity, but only when they are molten or dissolved in water. When they are a solid, they do not conduct electricity as there are no free moving ions.